Perfect. Hi, everybody. Thank you again for joining us and spending your summer Friday with us. Um, we are really excited to have you. We are here celebrating the special animation uh, session for us with Eric Bauza, and we are celebrating the release of Space Jam A New Legacy opening in theaters and on HBO Max on July 16th. Um, today, Eric is going to be teaching you how to draw some of our very favorite Looney Tunes characters. Eric started his career in animation as a character designer, working with a few production studios in Hollywood. It was there that was his introduction to the animation world and led him to become one of the most successful and in-demand voiceover talents in this town today. In this new film, Eric voices the iconic characters of Daffy Duck, Porky Pig, Foghorn Leghorn, and so many more. Um, so without further ado, everyone will give us a big wave to Eric and welcome him in. Um, I'm going to throw it over to you, Eric, and you can get us started. Uh, Tanks, man, what's up, Docs? Tanks for joining us. You know, you guys could be at a theme park or a park or outside, but you guys chose to be with me, Daffy Duck, today. Uh, guys, thank you so much. I really do appreciate seeing so many fans uh, of, of this upcoming movie space jam a new legacy and so many diehard fans of the original space jam like me uh and uh again i'm just here because i think we all love the looney tunes you know They're, they are these classic characters that have been with us for 80 years you know bugs bunny is like 81 years old you know and yeah i i uh, hide all my wrinkles with this fur on my face uh, yeah, it's it's kind of amazing to know that we've we've known these characters like we know like an old relative, like an old uncle or our grandparents, you know. Um, but uh, there's two things that I learned from Looney Tunes, of course, to to make funny voices, and I encourage you all watching to to keep making funny voices. You know, it's it's so much fun, especially at the dinner table at Thanksgiving, making fun of your cousins and and your aunts and uncles. Uh, but Looney Tunes also taught me how to draw. Uh, and that's exactly what I want to do with you guys today. Are you guys up for a drawing lesson? Cool, cool, cool. So today, I thought uh, we would go through uh, some of my favorite characters that I've voiced before. Uh, on, uh, on, on HBO Max, I voiced uh, Bugs Bunny for Looney Tunes cartoons. And then Space Jam, I'd like Daffy Duck. Woohoo! And Marvin the Martian, isn't that lovely? We're gonna we're gonna draw these characters. They all have their different, you know, degrees of difficulty. I think you guys all got this book. This is like the, one of the greatest things I remember as a kid loving any kind of like activity book or any kind of book that featured artwork from like these, you know from like the movie or whatever, because you could really study the characters. Uh, I used to watch these uh, old Looney Tunes cartoons and just really like, I would hit the pause button if I was recording it. So I could see how like to draw the characters, how they work. And it really is super easy if you break down the characters into simple shapes, step by step. So let's start with Bugs Bunny, okay? You guys got your pencil and paper ready? We're gonna draw, First, an oval, kind of like an egg shape. So you guys can, it doesn't have to be perfect because it's not gonna be like the final shape, but we're gonna draw like a shape like that, like an oval on your paper. And we're gonna put down the middle a vertical access line. And this is kind of like to give us some perspective. So, Anything that's on this side of the oval is going to be slightly bigger because it's kind of like our, our point of view. And then anything on this side, the smaller side, is going to be smaller. So once we've established that line going down the oval towards the bottom, but not the very bottom of the oval, we're going to put like a little small circle, like right about there, like another small oval. And this is going to act as, as you can see, Bugs Bunny's like his little like nose muzzle area. You know, and then uh, we're going to start by rounding out his cheek, kind of like that. We're going to do the first cheek, which is closest to us, kind of like that. And then we're going to do the other cheek, which again 
is kind of hidden behind uh, his face here. So it's going to be a bit smaller. But both of these lines are going to meet towards the bottom of his, his skull, like the little oval. And that's going to create the bottom part of his face, like his cheeks and his little chin. You guys see that? Step by step. Bear with me. I, I haven't drawn in years. I, I left the world of drawing to become a voiceover artist. But this is, I love learning and trying to teach with you because I learn as well. So we got his cheeks now. Now that we got that little muzzle, why don't we start by adding his teeth? So remember that middle line that went down? We could use that line as his teeth right here in the middle of his teeth. We don't want to draw it too thick because he doesn't have, I don't have a gap tooth. I just have buck teeth. So right in here, actually, you know what, we'll, we'll save the muzzle for later. Let's move on to his eye on this side of his face. Again, it's gonna be a little bit smaller. And then this eye is gonna be a little bit bigger because it's closer to us in perspective. And now that we have those eyes, we could fill in the pupil right here, fill in the pupil right here. And now we can go back to this little muzzle shape. So we're gonna kind of divide this in half and do like a little triangle for his little tiny nose. And we're gonna do the muzzle shape like that. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I'll wait. And then from there, we can kind of do the underside of his smile, like that little smile line. Kind of got, kind of makes those cheeks even it, it cuter. You know, he's got like those chubby cheeks. Cause they're full of carrots. And we'll do the other cheek on that side. On the outer part of this here, his face will join the cheek to his eyebrow like this. And then we can do the other eyebrow. And then much like the other side of his cheek on the back here, the back of his head will join to his cheek and we'll start to shape the top of his head. And it kind of looks like, you know, almost like kind of comes up like a bell. Like, kind of like that. From here, we could do his hair. He's got three little tufts like that. One, two, three. Now, this is always the, you know, the make or break moment because I always like have to make sure that I leave enough space for his big ears. His ears are about like a head and a half or a head and a quarter, sorry. Like, kind of like this and just a little bit more. So, like, right about there. So we're gonna do like from the back of his head, a line like that, and it kind of comes down like that. And then another line behind his hair that kind of comes out like that. And then we can do the inner workings of his ear, like another line in here, like that. And then like a smaller line in here, like so, and like that. We're not, we're, we're almost there. You can see like, this is pretty darn good, right? You guys I'm sure are doing a fantastic job. Let's go back to his cheeks. He's got like two or three kind of like, like, you know, bits of fur on his cheek here. So like that. And why don't we go ahead and give him like a big old smile. And then we'll do the bottom lip like that. Can't forget his tongue. And it's not bugs until he has his trademark six whiskers. So three whiskers on each side of the muzzle. And it doesn't, again, doesn't have to be three. You could do four. You could do one, two, three. One, two, three. And that's how you draw Bugs Bunny. We could also add the neck. I forgot. So it's not just a floating head. Do you guys do okay? 
<laughs> and again, Let's if see this it. is your first time drawing bugs, I promise you, if you practice, it's only going to get better from here. And I think we'll we'll take a peek at some of those uh, at the end. But I saw some of them. You guys did a great job. Do you guys want to move on to the next character? Who's up for a little bit of Daffy Duck action? So much like Bugs, Daffy kind of has the same kind of shaped head. Uh, you could start by doing like that oval. And then we're going to draw the same kind of uh, vertical axis line that will divide the oval into two different parts. And instead of drawing that little circle where Bugs Bunny had the muzzle, Daffy Duck has the big bill, like his beak. So let's draw like a line going out this way about the same uh, positioning where the Bugs Bunny muzzle was, like right about here. And just like Bugs Bunny, he's got like a cheek that kind of does that same kind of curve like this. Now from here, we're gonna do the inside laugh line of that cheek that's closest to us. So we're gonna do a line like that. And once we've established that, we're gonna draw another line probably closest towards that laugh line that goes down like this. It has like a bit of a curve to it, but it kind of goes straight down. Now to help kind of like, you know, stabilize the drawing, we're gonna do some of the eyes. So the eye that's furthest away is gonna be like that. And again, the eye that's closest to it's gonna be slightly bigger like this. And you could slowly start to see Daffy jump off the page. So why don't we just add that pupil in like that. Now he's kind of like staring at us. This is the fun part of drawing the duck bill is taking that kind of line that has that slight curve that goes down and we're gonna join it with the top line a bit like this. We're gonna make it curve up kind of like the brim of a, a baseball cap. And we're gonna do a line like this that tucks under. And that's like the duck bill. And on that duck bill, he's got like, on this side at least that we could see, he's got like the one little nostril. And then we're gonna do the other cheek that's tucked behind the bill like that. And a little laugh line right there. Let's continue by joining that cheek with the eyebrow. And then we could draw Daffy's other eyebrow. And just like bugs, we're gonna kind of shape the head. We're gonna draw the back of the head that joins the duck bill at a kind of a curve like that. And it kind of meets in the same place, just like bugs. And they have the same kind of hairstyle. It's like that three kind of tufts of hair. So like one, two, three. And it would only be appropriate to have an even bigger smile than bugs because Daffy like to spit all over the place. So we're gonna draw that big old smile down here with the tongue and that bottom lip. And it finishes off with that cheek. And then we're gonna draw that classic Daffy Duck neck with the collar. And from here, you can get fancy and, and fill them in with like your pencil or whatever device you're using to draw and kind of like color them in with like your pencil. And that, my friends, is how you draw Daffy Duck. How'd you guys do, good? <laughs> Whoa, very nice. Oh, there he is. I see so many good Daffy's out there, congrats. It's a really impressive, everyone. Look at that. I love it, Kathy. Wow. 
So great, right, you guys. We have time for one more character. What do you guys think? You guys want to try to draw Marvin? All right. This is like another one of those like simple but complicated character designs. I believe uh, Chuck Jones is the director that created the Marvin the Martian design. And it's such a funny character. You know that Marvin's from Mars, right? He's a Martian. He's, he's like an alien. He's not from our planet. Uh, so we're going to do a, a circle this time instead of an oval. And just like the other two characters, we're going to separate that circle with an axis line, a vertical axis line. This will kind of, again, help us decide where the eyeballs are. But before we can even get into that, we're going to go just above half of the circle. We're going to do the bottom part of his visor. I don't know if you could see this, but Marvin, he's, he has like a helmet on. It's almost like a, a Roman Empire helmet uh, to help protect him in space battles. So we're going to do the bottom part. And it's kind of like another line, another, it looks like an access line that kind of comes down like that. But it's actually the bottom part of the visor. At the end of that line, we'll put a circle here that acts as the hinge that keeps the visor attached to the helmet. And once we've established that circle, we could do the top part of the visor, like so. You see that shape? So that's like the top and bottom part of his visor. Once we've established that, we can do the inner workings of the visor, like another line that goes into that circle. And again, can be very rough. You guys are just exploring this character for the first time, no big deal. And then we're gonna define his face using that circle. From this hinge, we're gonna do the side compartments of, of his helmet. They, they kind of like come down like, <laughs> kind of like mutton chops, like sideburns, but they're there to protect him. It's like a football helmet. And then once we have that shape, we could use this perspective line here to do the other part of his helmet, like so. It kind of comes out like that. So now that we kind of have these in, I always like to fill in the eyes. And Marvin is always pretty darn suspicious of whoever he's hanging out with. He's always trying to take over the world. Not generally a happy guy. So we're going to do his eyes. And he has rather big eyes. They kind of take up almost his entire face because he doesn't have a nose or a mouth. So you can kind of do like these suspicious or like angry eyebrows and we'll give them kind of like the ridges like that and then we can put in the pupils now we're going to finish the helmet once you guys have kind of roughed in the eyes so this back part here kind of comes up to an edge and we could use that rough circle that we drew to finish the helmet. So just darken that circle line and you have the back of Marvin's helmet. Funny part about the helmet always that I always found funny was that little push broom, that little, that little broom on the top of his helmet. I don't know what, I guess it's decorative or maybe he wants to sweep the floor later with his helmet. Uh, let's try to draw that. He's got, it's, it's joined to the helmet by like this little kind of like stick, almost like a broom handle. And then we're going to do kind of like the underside of a rectangle, but also in perspective that kind of goes like this. We'll do one line here. We'll jut that line out like this and do the other side. And once we have these lines in place, we can kind of give it like dimension by adding like the ridge of that broom and then my favorite part is adding the bristles once you guys are there I'll, I'll hang out for a bit while you guys get those moves down so the bristle would be like it's almost like a chalk chalkboard eraser like kind of like that same theory and shape and then from here you can kind of 
add as many lines as possible. You don't have to do too many. And just like Daffy, we can color in Marvin's face once you've done the push broom on the top of his head. And that is how you draw Marvin the Martian. How'd you guys do? <laughs> I know, it's a tough one, but I thought these three characters are pretty challenging to draw. And uh, again, with enough practice, and if you, especially if you had fun, you, you, can, you can master these characters. I still have to, oh, look at that, look at that Marvin, it's so good. Wow, wow, I am impressed. So impressive. You guys, I, I can't believe how talented you are. So awesome, you guys. Now, all you have to do is learn how to do these voices and I can retire. <laughs> we still need you, Eric. Okay, fine, I'll stay. Well, before we let Eric go, you guys, we're gonna ask, throw a couple questions out to you guys so you guys can ask Eric some of your personal questions. Um, first up, we're going to have Christina Patrizio and her two adorable children as they are dressed for the jam. Um, Christina, take it away. Ready. Hi, Eric. Um, Hi. Our question was, I know you voiced not just Looney Tunes characters, but a lot of characters. We did our research. And what character has been your favorite to voice? Oh, boy. What a fantastic question. I love this question. Uh, I mean, uh, like you said, outside the Looney Tunes universe, I've voiced plenty of characters, but to me, Looney Tunes will always be the number one. Uh, and I have to say, uh, again, with, with, with a 50-50 with a finish, uh, it would have to be between Bugs and Daffy. Uh, Bugs Bunny is like one of the coolest characters, and Daffy can get really mad. He's the voice that I use when I'm in traffic. Hey, share her road, pal. But yeah, I mean, I, I love these characters. But yeah, Bugs and Daffy, I would say, it's a two-way tie. Thanks for asking. Thank you. Okay, our next question is going to come from Ashley Saunders. Hi. So I was wondering, um, you voice a lot of characters in the movie, and I was wondering which one is most like you. Oh, man. Uh, I mean, I, I usually go with Bugs. Uh, because he's kind of like, he's kind of like the every person, you know, like he, he kind of just minds his own business until of course, someone like Yosemite Sam or Elmer Fudd gets in his way. And then he kind of has to become a trickster. Uh, you know, he, he's, he's one of my favorites. Uh, and, um, but for the same reason, I like Daffy. He kind of, he, he gets his, uh, he gets into trouble with his big beak, you know, he kind of just acts inappropriately sometimes but it's you know he redeems himself later on he learns his lesson uh but yeah i, I mean these uh, characters are there's so many great personalities tweety is the same way he's kind of like appears to be innocent but boy you don't want to mess with tweety <laughs> yeah <laughs> ask sylvester <laughs> but yeah i'd say bugs bugs is like one of my favorites and, and, and I'm most like him. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Our next question is going to come from Taddy Perdia from Cool Mom Cool Tips. Okay. Hi, thank you for being with us today. Um, I wanted to ask you, what was the most challenging in making this movie? Oh, wow. Well, I mean, I think uh, I speak for all of us when I say, uh, you know the 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 uh the pandemic not being able to be in studio we started the movie uh you know working in studio and then suddenly we weren't uh allowed to go back in but uh, i was able to record all of my voices from home we were able to communicate as we are now over zoom uh you know a good percentage of the movie uh space jam a new legacy would have been recorded in my closet so if you hear my neighbor's dog barking during the movie or uh, any lawnmowers i promise i'll pay uh, your month subscription of hbo max my apologies <laughs> but uh, no the, i just saw the movie the other day it's as if we were still together while making the movie uh last year and uh if anything you know people love a good challenge and i think when we're challenged 
sometimes not just uh, in uh, animation and work, but in life, some good things will happen and and we 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 get above it and and we move on and and we do our best. Uh, I think it's it's great that the movie has come out at this time when things are starting to lighten up. Uh, I actually went to the movie theater for the first time in a long time the other day. I ate popcorn outside of my house and it was fine. So I really do hope that, uh, you know, if you can't go to the movies, of course, you could watch Space Jam A New Legacy on HBO Max, July 16th. But if you're feeling up to it, I think seeing this movie on a big screen with big sounds, you can hear all the music, all the jokes. It's going to be, uh, I think, one of the biggest movies to come out in 2021, if not the biggest. Because of Daffy Duck, of course. But of course. Okay, our next question is going to come from Susie from Happy Mess, Happy Mess Moments. How do you prepare yourself before each character? Oh, man, that, uh, I, I go back to the classics. Thanks for asking. What a good question. Uh, I go back to watching the original shorts because, again, uh, I didn't create these characters. I'm just one of the lucky people that gets to uh, remind people why we love them so much. The original voice actor, of course, is Mel Blank. He's the one that created all of these amazing personalities and characters, all of their uh, 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 speech impediments, and uh, you know all of these funny voices that you would uh, think that they came from a bunch of people, but it was just one guy doing it. It was him and June Foray. She's like. If you could say Mel Blanc was the man of a million voices, June Foray was the woman of a million voices. Uh, she was the voice of Granny. She, uh, you know, outside of Looney Tunes, she was Rocky from Rocky and Bullwinkle. And, you know, I was one of the lucky ones that got to meet her. Um, and uh, yeah, just, I watched the original uh, classics to get warmed up. And uh, yeah, I practice in my car on my way to the session. <laughs> Thank you so much. Our next question is going to come from Kathy Cupkit from Bel Air Mommy. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Ari. Thank you so much for being here. You are ridiculously talented. It's amazing. <laughs> oh my God. So I wanted to ask you I know this is going to be a wild question, but the characters that you voices that you voice over, what is one or two of the fondest memories you have? Oh boy. I mean, okay. This is, this is, uh, thank you for asking. And thank you so much for the kind words. I, I really think that uh, you're uh, only as talented as the company that you keep. So you guys, I think are, are too mega kind. talented as well, you know, doing what you guys do, not just drawing, but being parents and, and keeping your kids entertained uh, this whole time. Um, fondest memories coming with these characters have would have to be, uh, you know, the original Space Jam was made in 1996. And before then, there were these two Super Bowl commercials for Nike with Michael Jordan and Bugs Bunny. Uh, I grew up in the 90s and Michael Jordan uh, at the time, you know, arguably one of the greatest players of all time. And he really did inspire this bond between basketball and the Looney Tunes. Uh, and those, you could look them up on uh, YouTube. They're on there. It's, it, the commercials are, you could just type in air and hair Jordan. Uh, and I was like, what, maybe like 10, 12. I would, I, I made my mom drive out to Foot Locker to buy the t-shirts and all the, the hats and the shoes. You know, I, I'm 41 years old. I'm still wearing a Bugs Bunny t-shirt. And, and I got a five-year-old son and I'm gonna, he's gonna love Looney Tune. He loves them just as much as I do. But the full, the full circle moment came for me when I got to star as Marvin the Martian in a Nike commercial for the Air Jordan shoe, uh, not with Michael Jordan, but with Blake Griffin, formerly of the, uh, the LA Clippers. And uh, it, it, the director of that, commercial was John Favreau. He's the guy that directed those Iron Man movies. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was called um, The Dunk to End All Dunks. And it was a, a slam dunk competition between Blake Griffin and Marvin the Martian. And I never would have guessed in a million years being a fan of these, these, you know, these commercials, these short stories, uh, that I would be in one myself. 
So it just goes to show you kids, if you have a dream or a passion to do something, never give up on yourself and never give up on that dream because you never know what's going to happen later on, you know, especially if you try. Uh, you, you might find that you don't like it and you, you move on and you do something else. But if you do love it, uh, you'll never know what can happen. Suddenly you become Daffy Duck. You know, it's, it's the strangest thing. But yeah, that, that, that was like one of them. And, and then again, getting to meet someone like June Foray, who was, an, who was involved in the original production. She was voicing Granny in a cartoon and I was voicing Marvin the Martian. And I, I just thanked her, you know, for all of the years that she put in voicing and creating these characters. And, you know, it's just, it, it was a magical experience. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Our next question is going to come from Angela and Andrew from Queen Bee Latina. Hi, um, I have a question. So yes. how did you get started in animation? Oh, wow. We have a, a very driven young man here. He wants to know right now. You, you just did it. This was your first test. <laughs> this was all an elaborate prank to get you to work at Warner Brothers. Congratulations. You're hired. Uh, just like this, you know, um, drawing every day, like just for fun. If, if it's something that you like to do, then then you, you've already started your journey uh, into animation. Uh, of course, you know, stay in school. Uh, you know, the, the, there were many courses in, in all over the world where you can study art and animation. Uh, I'm originally from... Uh, Toronto, Canada, eh? You know, uh, we're, we're the neighbors to the north. America's hat, as they like to say. Uh, you know, there's there's plenty of schools there for animation, but uh, uh, I decided to to leave my, my home in Toronto to come here. I'm, I'm here in Los Angeles, California. I always noticed that uh, in those 1940 cartoons, it said Burbank, California, made in Burbank, California. I was like, where is this place? And uh, now I know where it is. I know where all the targets are in Burbank. So if you ever, if you ever know, want to know where Target is, I'll let you know. Uh, but uh, there's so many animation studios in Burbank. And, um, you know, once you go through school and kind of like learn like the logistics of, of how animation works, then you start building your, your demo reel and your portfolio, like a collection of all your drawings to impress these studios. And uh, hopefully and surely they'll probably, uh, they'll hire you. And then from there, uh, it's, it's up to you, you know, uh, put in the work and, and I think good things will happen. Okay, great, I'm gonna have, we have time for one more question from Selena Hughes from Sitting Pretty with Selena and her boys. Okay. Hi Eric, thank you for the lesson. And my question Hi. was actually just answered, but I would like to know, like during animation um, or voiceover, are you like thinking of the character in your mind? What are you thinking when you're animating or voice doing the voiceover for the characters? Another great question. It's like just the personalities and what what you remember, especially with these established characters, if it's an original character that you've come up with like on your own, you kind of have this blank canvas to work with. But if it's characters like the Looney Tunes, again, that have been around for 81 years now, mm -hmm. uh, you kind of take, I take every memory. Now, kids back in my day, cartoons were only available on Saturday mornings yeah. after school. Now you can watch a, a cartoon on the side of my glass here. Um, but it's like, you know, uh, I took every Saturday morning that me and my big brother, I got a brother, his name's Alan, he's six years older than me. We used to watch the Bugs Bunny and Tweety show. And I just take every memory, every laugh that I ever experienced with these characters. And I, I think about what would make people laugh if I had a chance to be... Bugs Bunny, like what would he say and how would he act? And then of course you have the support of, of everyone else that makes the cartoon. The director's there, the writers are there, the producer, the musicians, all of the talented artists and painters, uh, even the production assistants. They're all, we're all there working together as a team. 
but it's it really is the the memories that I had as a kid. So, yes. you know, hopefully you guys will remember this day and, and maybe some <laughs> kind of spark can happen today to, to help your creative side. Right. So this is a dream come true, right? Proof that dreams come true. I am literally living a dream right now. Mm-hmm. And to be able to share that with you guys today is fantastic. And yeah. um, it's one thing to, to, to be here again, but to hopefully inspire and inform people who have that mm-hmm. curiosity about like, should I do this? Is mm-hmm. this for me? Can I do this? Can I make a living, you know, doing drawing? You know, uh, yeah, you can. It's, it's kind of a, an amazing thing. Um, you know, this is again, one of the most anticipated, not just movies, but events in animation. Mm-hmm. Like people have been waiting 25 years to see like another space jam and here That's we right. are. Well, thank you and congratulations. Thank Before you. we go, we're gonna take a group photo. So everyone get your animated drawings up. And JPI will tell us on the count of three when we can all smile pretty for the camera with our with our drawings. All right, guys. So if everyone's got their images up, perfect. And then on the count of three, one, two, careful with those virtual backgrounds, make sure we can see everybody. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, great. And then if you guys wanna take one with your pictures down and then you guys can just smile, we'll do a second one. All right, great. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, great. Thanks, guys, so much. Thank Thank you, everybody.